Anidoki by Mizuki Kawashita was a harem manga published in Shonen Jump about a decade ago. It's about a 13-year-old boy named Kota who meets a girl named Natsuki on the way home from school. Cultish in appearance and bold in character, 17-year-old Natsuki asks Kota for some of his ice cream as she's feeling dehydrated on the hot summer day. When Kota gets back home, his father is conveniently written out of the story, opening up the opportunity for Natsuki to move in and be a personal onaho, I mean maid, for Kota, taking care of things while his dad is gone. Sounds like a familiar premise? Yeah, it should. The mangaka's previous works, Ichigo 100% and First Love Limited, were somewhat similar and wildly popular in Weekly Shonen Jump during the noughties. Shueisha deemed Kawashita as the harem successor to Masakazu Katsura. He's the harem parent. Author of the legendary Video Girl Eye, Zetman, and Eyes. The manga scene during that time was very different than it is now. Love Hina had taken the world by storm and raunchy harem was as popular as Battle Shonen. Magazines were scrambling to get their own harem and the reading public was eating it up. During this time, Hayate the Combat Butler, Rosario 2 Vampire, Tenchi Muyo, Oh My Goddess, Shuffle were wildly popular series in Japan and overseas. Anime was starting to become more mainstream and waifu culture was blooming. It was a great time to be a horny teen otaku, believe me. But despite the mass appeal, a lot of these series weren't good. It's not that they were written poorly. Some of these harem have become beloved additions to anime and manga and have stood the test of time. But as the decade wore on, otaku patience wore thin. The plots were so similar to one another and the girls so interchangeable that the excitement of having a self-insert male character stumbling his way through a sea of double Ds only to end up choosing your least favorite waifu had become stale. Anime fans were developing a more sophisticated taste as 2010 rolled about. Yeah, you wanted highlighted color broads with cow titties who went and would bake shit for the main character. But you could get that sort of dynamic from female characters in other anime and manga. Battle Shonen started to up the ante with its fan service. Parody doujin was waning and original content quickly became a thing. Isekai soon upset harem as the preferred theme for anime fans. Things changed. And Anidoki is the perfect example of why a mangaka needs to be fluid with the times. The series is played so straight that it's a detriment. The relationship between Kota and Natsuki was actually unique for its time cause Kota didn't want to nakadashi this chick. The age gap between them was also an interesting tip. Natsuki saw it fit to help this young boy who lacked a mother father and a clean home to grow into a fine young man, boosting his confidence and charisma along the way. Even as more female characters were introduced into the story, Kota and Natsuki never exhibited any real romantic feelings towards one another. Kanade Sakurai is a play-by-numbers best girl who weaves in and out of the plot, vying for Kota's affection, all the while feeling insecure towards overdeveloped and outgoing Natsuki. Chiaki Hagiwara, Natsuki's younger sister, is the snotty, bratty sibling who is closer in age to Kota and adds a somewhat annoying, competitive dynamic to the plot. But in case you were interested in more incest vibes, the introduction of older sister Haruki Hagiwara, a lingerie designer who looks like a dead lay, gives off the vibe that the mangaka doesn't really know the direction they wanted to go with the story. Characters are just introduced and don't really aid in helping Kota grow, as was the original goal of Natsuki's. And because they aren't romantic rivals, a lot of the time, you don't really know what you're reading and why you're even bothering to continue on with the manga. And this was Kawashita's biggest crutch. Strawberry petered out when audiences caught on to the fact that nothing significant was happening. 
limited while taking on a different vantage point than Strawberry, fell into the same traps as her other series. With Annie Doki, there's more of a romance element to the overall theme than Harem, and as the manga goes on, you can tell that Kawashita is desperately trying to shift the tone of the manga to feel more mature and increase the stakes. But the damage was done from the first chapter. As cool as it was to have a young MC, if he wasn't aiming to raw dog the female lead, then why did readers care about their interactions? His immaturity reared its head in every chapter, so you couldn't really root for the boy because he was not a real character. What 13 year old do you know would turn down sleeping in the same bed or showering with a hot older girl? And what 13 year old boy doesn't know about sex? strip clubs, dirty jokes, and crushes on his classmates. By making Kota so pure, you made him boring, and as he had no other goals or motivations aside from avoid sexual tension with all females at all cost, it made every single interaction with the harem dull as fuck. Anidoki never stood a chance. It was at the bottom of TOC often during its entire run, and by around chapter 20, you can tell this series was about to get axed. The ending was abrupt and a little hurtful if I'm being honest. It felt like the M0 ending and it was not satisfying at all. Unfortunately, Hunter Hunter was returning from hiatus at the time, which killed Anidoki for its spot in the magazine. I would have liked to have seen this one get to 50 chapters. I think there could have been something interesting built up here. There was another sister we needed to see, and if given the chance, introducing a rival male into the story could have given Kawashita enough leeway to eke out a solid conclusion. But her greatest skill is also her biggest weakness. Kawashita is a very narrow-minded author, and I don't think she's able to write anything worthwhile that isn't teenage ecchi or harem. All of her stories start strong, but taper off badly. Her artwork is dazzling, and her work ethic during that time should be the envy of mangaka today. I would love to see her team up with a solid writer and provide us one more crack at harem, but with maybe a sci-fi or a fantasy or even a sports slant to it. Anything but the teenage school setting. If you like Video Girl I, Ichigo 100%, Eyes, or Blue Box, basically Shonen Jump romance, you'll find some joy in reading this manga. Anidoki is a 5 out of 10.